allow me to introduce myself. I am Farooq Nakvi, an avionics engineer based in Australia with a deep passion for architecture and ancient civilization, particularly the Indus Valley civilization. My journey to decipher the Indus script began in 2019 with what can only be described as a miracle, an event that set me on the path to unraveling one of the history's greatest mysteries, how to read the Indus script. For six years, I dedicated myself to this quest, meticulously analyzing thousands of Indus inscriptions. This tireless research led to a groundbreaking comprehensive and conclusive decipherment of the Indus script. In my upcoming book, I provide an in-depth exploration of this journey, detailing the methods, challenges, and breakthroughs that shaped this process. The Indus Valley Civilization is considered one of the three earliest civilizations in world history, along with Mesopotamia and Egypt. This civilization flourished in the western part of the South Asia, along the Indus River and now extinct Saraswati River. The Indus Valley Civilization had meticulously planned cities, sophisticated water drainage system, and advanced farming practices. However, the Indus Valley Civilization is best known for its miniature seals, of which thousands were discovered during the excavation of various sites in India and Pakistan. They are generally square, with all sites approximately one and a half inch long. Seals display the script on the top and an animal motif at the center. These seals were carved out of soapstone and fired to make them more durable. Dr. Ascopar Pola got photographs of its scattered Indus seals in India and Pakistan documented in a two-volume corpus. These corpus became reference materials for my research work for deciphering the Indus script. I used a cryptography technique that involved frequency analysis of symbols to decipher the Indus script. I will go into details of the process in subsequent slides. After I showed a draft copy of my book to my friends, they had a number of questions which I will discuss along with their answers. One of the most commonly asked questions was, how could you establish that the underlying language is Sanskrit? It is important to note that at first I made few assumptions and one of the assumptions was that the Sanskrit was the underlying language for this script. The words written on the seals began to unravel as soon as the decipherment process started, confirming the validity of the original assumption that Sanskrit was the underlying language with minor variations, which I will discuss later. Sanskrit was taken into consideration as the underlying language for three key reasons. Number one, cultural continuity. For instance, the geometrical patterns and the swastika sign from the Indus Valley civilization are still in use today. Number two, Saraswati River is mentioned in various Vedic literature. Around 1500 BC, the Saraswati River became extinct, coinciding with the fall of the Indus Valley Civilization. The Saraswati River has to be contemporary to the Indus Valley Civilization. Only then it would be possible for a number of authors to mention this river in various Vedic literature. Number three, the collapse of the Indus Valley civilization might not have led to the complete extinction of the population. The residual population would inherit at least part of the ancient spoken language and that will ensure the cultural continuity. But that was an assumption to be clear. However, after verification, it turned out that the underlying language was highly Sanskritized Prakrit language similar to Pali. And that is the beauty of the decipherment. If it is done correctly, then you will get a lot of information which no one else knows. If you do it wrongly, then you will not get any new information, just like Yajan Devan's alleged decipherment. What method did you employ to decipher the script? in absence of any bilingual script such as Rosetta Stone. And that was the another commonly asked question. I employed Al-Kindi's method, a simple technique, which was frequently used by medieval armies to decipher the coded messages. In this slide, I will provide details of the methodology that was employed during the decipherment process using an example. Although a Sanskritized Prakrit language is the underlying language, 
for the understanding of the broader audience in the following example english is considered as the underlying language to explain the methodology let us try to understand the decipherment process using an example so the step number one is to make assumption although sanskritized prakrit language is the underlying language for the understanding of the broader audience in the following example english is considered as the underlying language uh, step number two will involve uh, conducting frequency analysis based on alkindi's method of cryptology uh, that will involve creating a table and assigning the symbol with the highest frequency of appearances in the interscript script to the letter with the highest frequency of appearances in the known script in this case english so the highest frequency will go on the top of the table in the second row of the table we will assign the symbol with the second highest frequency of the appearances in the interscript script to the letter with the second highest frequency of the appearances in the known script in the third row we will assign the symbol with the third highest frequency of appearances in the interscript script to the letter with the third highest frequency of the appearances in the known script so this way we will provide this we will create a table in descending order this table will provide a preliminary relationship between the symbols of the interscript script and the known script in the uh, step 3 Uh, we will take a seal uh, and in this we can see uh, in this seal a rhino is shown and on the top of that there is an inscription uh, with some in the symbol and if we look for the symbol what those symbols are against the table which we have created then we can see the second third fourth and fifth symbol are h i n o so the so, second symbol correspond to h the third symbol correspond to letter i and the fourth symbol correspond to letter n and the fifth symbol correspond to letter o so if the first symbol is to correspond to the letter r then word become rhino and that will make sense with the motif so that is our guess at this stage that the leaf looking symbol of the indus script will correspond to the letter r now we are going to test this assumption so let, let us see another inscription and in this inscription a horse is depicted and the, on the top of that there is an inscription and if we look for the symbols against the table which we have made so we can see the first symbol corresponds to h second symbol correspond to o and the fourth symbol correspond to s and the fifth symbol corresponds to e so if the third symbol from the left corresponds to the letter r then the word word will, will become horse and that will make sense with the motif so we can see from the the seal which is shown above and shown below that leaf like symbol corresponds to the letter r so now we have tested that the leaf like symbol corresponds to letter r now what we will do we will update the provisional frequency table with this symbol and we will assign the leaf like leaf like symbol against the letter r of the english script and this process will continue until the all the symbol of the script are deciphered so that is the basic process thank you very much there was another question has my work been peer reviewed 
answer is no. Uh, originally, I had planned to release this book in April 2025. However, I have decided to delay its publication to allow for a thorough peer review by experts in the field. I invite universities worldwide, particularly those in India, to undertake this critical review, ensuring the integrity and credibility of the findings before they are shared with the world. Additionally, I encourage media channels to engage in this process, facilitating informed discussion, including myself and broader academic circle, uh, where I can disclose major findings even before publication of the book. There was another question. Uh, what gives me confidence that my decipherment is accurate, given that the document hasn't been reviewed? Out of this decipherment, we come across a script which is highly structured. With majority of vowels are based on a mathematical pattern. Any false decipherment wouldn't have been able to extract this pattern. Unlike other scripts, the inter script consonants and conjuncts are based on a very solid logical ground. Since the decipherment is correct, it reveals all the mysteries and knowledge which were lost for at least the last 3000 years. There is a strong correlation between the inscription and the animal depicted on the seal. This provides further verification that decipherment being correct. There was another question. A person known as Yajna Devam has also claimed that he has deciphered the Indus script. So what is the difference between his alleged decipherment and your decipherment? His claim that he has deciphered the Indus script is plainly false. I will repeat, plainly false. There are hundreds of examples to prove his claim being false. However, I will quote three of them. Example number one. In his alleged decipherment, a single jar-like symbol represents four sounds including sh, m, n, a, and r. Suppose there is an inscription with three jar-like symbols. Then, according to his method, it could be read as ram, ran, man, mash, sham. It could be anything. This is a guesswork not a decipherment. If we were to use his method, an inscription could never be read. Example number two, even within the same seal M1792, he has assigned the jar-like symbol to three different sounds, pronouncing the first jar symbol as M, the second jar symbol as R, and the third as A. There is no standard, there is no rule. The assignment is completely arbitrary. Furthermore, he has also done the opposite and assigned multiple symbols to a sim single sound as shown in example 3, where more than 17 inter symbols have been used to represent the single R sound. If a script is so imprecise, then it is not worthy of being considered as a script. In a nutshell, his alleged decipherment insists that the Indus script was a primitive script that used 17 random symbols to represent a single R sound. Thus, we are left with a picture of a society that had a highly primitive script used by super intelligent people who could make sense out of it. In actuality, his claim is completely false. He did not succeed for a reason. All of the earlier attempts had failed for the same reason. The reason is that, like his predecessor, he was unable to map over 800 Indus script symbols into 54 Sanskrit letters. He claimed to have used cryptogram, but in reality, he was either unable to use it or did not use it at all. In the end, he was arbitrarily mapping the symbols as he wished. The process was essentially garbage in and garbage out. I will repeat garbage in, garbage out. The result, his alleged decipherment produced no useful data. 
On other hand, my decipherment demonstrates that the Indus script was the most sophisticated script ever created by humans. An established cryptography technique is used in my process. In my methodology, the same Sanskrit sound is not arbitrarily assigned to an Indus symbol and vice versa. My initial assumption was that Sanskrit would be the underlying language, but the outcome was unexpected. The underlying language was the Sanskritized version of a Prakrit language similar to Pali. It turned out to be employing pre panin Sanskrit known as Andrea system, which at this moment of time no one knows except me due to this decipherment. This script has many sounds that were lost in Sanskrit such as sound of W, which doesn't exist in any Indian language, and is pronounced as V. A second H sound was also identified that provides direct evidence of laryngeal theory to be correct. In addition, the decipherment identified existence of a second Y sound, which doesn't exist in Sanskrit. Andrew Schiller, a well-known linguist had predicted this sound as the missing sound of the Vedic Sanskrit when he compared the Vedic literature against the Zoroastrian religious literature. The Indus script contains a lot more vowels than any other alphabet in the world, with many of them grouped in a numerical formulas. From the perspective of a linguist, it will, have, it will have extremely important implications. We are close to reconstructing a language that could be categorized as a Proto-Indo-European language. Since the Indus script has notable Prakrit language traits, it can be concluded that the speakers of the Aryan language had already been in the Indus Valley for a long time. Then it begs a question. Where did the Aryans came from? This book combines archaeological, genetic, and linguistic evidence to trace ancient Aryan migrations that resulted in spreading of various Indo-European languages around the world. Result of this analysis rejects the popular Kurgan hypothesis proposed by Maria Gimbutas and emphasized that these were the Aryans who established Old Europe and started farming practices. Finally, this book includes the decipherment of several Indus description, including Pashpati seal, which turned out to be not Pashpati seal, and Dhola Vira gate inscription. The decipherment of the Indus script is a miracle. The definition of a miracle, according to the Littlewood law, is an exceptional event whose probability of occurrence is one in a million. My decipherment journey started when I came across a seal with image of a bull and an inscription with two symbols on the top. Through the blessing of Imam Hussain, a two-letter word was put into my mind. These two letters corresponded to two symbols shown on the seal. The two-letter word was like a free end given to me to untangle the Indus script's Gordian knot. I later discovered that the letters which appeared in my mind were the exact translation of the Indus symbols. The probability of this exceptional event to occur will be 1 in 45 trillion, indeed a miracle. O oh Allah, bestow your grace, honor and mercy onto Muhammad and his family, for it is through them that you reveal the unknown mysteries of the universe.